Hello, and welcome to another episode of me sitting on my bedroom floor. I just felt like a change of scenery. And um, I wanted to talk about, sorry, if you can see the sweat on my nose because it is a surprisingly, look, let's just have a look outside. It looks gray and miserable, but it's actually a pretty warm day. That's, that's Melbourne, you know, it's deceptive in its weather. You can't judge based on one glance outside. You do really have to check the weather because yesterday was pretty cool and today it's warm again and I'm sweating. So, please ignore that. Anyway, today I wanted to discuss things that I will and won't buy in 2021 because I think 2020 really changed my shopping habits in terms of makeup. I bought way less than I would normally. I probably spend as much as it would cost to buy a small car in a normal year, which is absolutely crazy. Don't tell my husband. Versus last year where I virtually bought one eyeshadow palette. I'm not sure about how you feel about makeup and, and your shopping habits. I'm guessing majority of you have probably cut your spending or maybe you've increased it because we're not traveling or anything. I don't know. I sort of started to distinguish that line between liking a product and admiring it for its, you know, its qualities without feeling the need of actually going ahead and purchasing that. And I think that this year it's it's going to be the same. I so far have purchased two things from two influencer brands. Well, one's an influencer brand, one was a collaboration. Can you guess? It's one that everyone's talking about. Basically, I just don't feel like I'm going to be bringing that much makeup into my life because I know what I like and what I don't like. So let's start with things that I'm not going to bring into my collection and into my life in 2021. And that that is foundations, especially like full coverage, even medium coverage foundations. First of all, I have a lot already. And also like the fact that I've been wearing a mask for the majority of last year has sort of meant that I have used a very, very little amount of foundation, even base products. I'm just gonna be looking for ways to shear down my existing foundations because I just don't want that full coverage, full glam thing anymore. It's just not my aesthetic. I'm very much considering repurchasing my Trini London De-Stress BFF cream, which is a tinted moisturizer, but I really should be working on my, what I already have. Now, another thing I'm not gonna be buying this year in that same line is blush and highlight. I have plenty, especially because I am working on my cream products and I've just gotten so into cream products. And, and you know, with cream products, you just can't have too many at one time. Otherwise they will get wasted because they will go off if you don't finish them up. They take a while to actually use up one cream blush. Like for me, it probably took me six months or more of continuous daily use and I'm not wearing makeup daily these days. And if I'm wearing a mask or something like that, and who knows, maybe masks might come back in as mandatory again. You know, here downwards, I'm not putting any makeup on because I don't like the whole transfer, you know, do what you want. If you feel like you want to put makeup on, do it. But I just didn't like putting you know, anything around this area. So that included blush and highlight and I just wasn't wearing it. I am wearing it today and it's making me feel very good, but I'm using stuff that I already have. And if you want to know what that is, I will, as usual, put it in the description. Look, I really have those M Cosmetics serum blushes on my list and I will eventually try them once shipping is not a ridiculous amount. I think shipping when I put in the in my cart was like something like $40 US or something crazy like that. And I won't be paying paying that. For shipping. So I'm okay. My life is fine without those blushes. I am not feeling left out. If I saw it in my local Sephora, there's no doubt I would definitely pick one shade up. So I'm okay. Got enough blushes in my life. Got enough highlighters in my life. I'm set in that sense. Another thing I'm not going to be buying, which is, it's kind of funny because I've already kind of broken that rule. I'm not very likely to buy <laughs> many eyeshadow palettes unless I'm like, wow, that looks amazing. The formula looks amazing. The color story looks amazing because have you realized I've just become a basic bitch when it comes to eyeshadows. I, I really just do basic. I remember watching one of Tina's latest videos where she was doing a chat, get ready with me. And she was saying that she feels like her makeup skills, her eyeshadow skills have gone downhill. And I feel exactly the same. Like if I had to recreate one of those crazy eye looks that I did back in the day, you know, like three years ago, I probably couldn't. Or if I did, it would probably look quite different because I feel like I just have not been practicing a lot of the techniques that I was employing with those eyeshadow looks. I've just liked to simplify everything these days. Maybe I'll feel one day like I want to do something a bit more than like 
a brown eyeshadow and some brown eyeliner, but not right now. And I'm actually feeling very good having hit pan and some um, eyeshadow products I've been consistently using. One being my warm mattes from Viseart and the other being my cool palette from Dose of Colors. Very happy to hit pan on both of those and those are my browns that I've been wearing. So besides the palette that I bought recently, which I will feature eventually on this, this channel, hopefully. Okay, might as well just show it. I bought this palette. And it's beautiful. Unless there's something that blows me away, unless there's like Suku or something brings out a palette that I'm like, whoa, I don't have that in my collection. I feel like I've got everything. I don't have a lot of multi in my collection. That's probably something that I'm not going to be buying either is kind of crazy eyeshadows. I didn't quite hop onto the multi-dimensional eyeshadow bandwagon. Cleona and a whole bunch of other brands brought out some amazing looking eyeshadows. And for me, I mean, like when you swatch on your hand, it looks absolutely amazing. But I'm not, I'm just not going to be swiping it all over my eye on a regular day because I work in financial services and banking. It's just not necessarily the most professional look and I see a lot of clients. So for my lifestyle, it doesn't make a lot of sense. If I was in uni, if I was like 10 years ago, oh my gosh, I would have loved it. I would have seriously loved it. You know, even on weekends, it's fine. But just like it comes to, you know, how I curate my wardrobe and invest the most in areas where I know I'm going to be putting the most time into. I'm not going to be investing like hundreds of dollars into eyeshadows that I will only be wearing on the weekend. And being a mom of two young kids, there's really not that much downtime, unfortunately. So, you know, I have to be realistic with my lifestyle as sad as it is. And I'm sorry if you've subscribed to me because you're interested in like all those fun eye looks because I, I'm sadly to say, I'm probably not going to be doing very much of them. I have to be realistic and I don't think this year is going to be that much different. In fact, this year is probably going to be, you know, less downtime, sadly. And as you know, I probably only upload once every fortnight these days, which is actually, it saddens me, but that's unfortunately the, how much time I can give at the moment. Um, hopefully more in future. Another thing I won't be buying is any more face powders. Again, in that same note of I have too many foundations, I have too many face powders still and because I hadn't been wearing most of it in 2020 it is very unlikely that I will be bringing in those kind of products into my collection unless it's absolutely amazing and then I feel like I really need it but it's unlikely base products for me I have to really really be sold on it in order to want it in my collection because I have so many and because you never know touch wood but hopefully we can continue in Australia in Melbourne to not necessarily have to wear a face mask everywhere and thereby have to or not have to but like it just discourages me to wear wear base products because I'm like well, I'm gonna put a mask on it it's pointless I don't want to clog my skin any more than it needs to be with a mask so I'm just I just don't think I'm gonna be buying much base products in general you know like foundation powder highlighter blush what else goes on the face bronzer, contour, etc, etc. I just don't think I will. That's probably all I can think about in my I'm definitely not going to buy in 2021 list. I mean, never say never, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to buy those things. Let's talk about some things that I will be totally into buying this year. The first being good old sunscreens. We need them. My skin is aging. I need protection from our harsh Australian sun. Other things I totally will buy this year is I want to get back into wearing lipstick. I have missed wearing lipstick all those months, not wearing lipstick because of masks. I really miss a pop of color on the lips. I mean, Lisa Eldridge does being a collection every year. I'm probably going to buy it buy it let's face it still not 100% sold on lip liners but lip glosses lipsticks in shades that are interesting that flatter me I would totally be down to buying those things because I'm liberated my face is liberated from those months of masks and I'm I'm back on to wearing lipstick I'm really enjoying it I really think that a beautiful pop of color on the lips just pulls the whole you know, look together. Other things I'm totally down for, I have been definitely investing more into my skincare when in the past I probably didn't care as much because I was quite complacent. Now that I'm, you know, a little bit older than I was when I first started my channel, I want to put more effort into my skin. I definitely notice signs of aging. I'm kind of scared of needles, especially around my face. I probably wouldn't go that direction. You know, my skin does get really quite dry, so I've invested more into moisturizers and serums and facial oils. I think there is a lot of gimmicky kind of 
advertising with makeup and skincare. So I am a little bit worried about that. I like that this is something that more brands are considering in their makeup. You know, I like those skincare benefits added into makeup. If we're wearing makeup all the time, that does take a toll on your skin. And if we can have the best of both worlds, that would be great. I'd be totally curious to know some of your favorite products that incorporate both skincare and makeup. Totally down for that. What else will I buy this year? I'll probably repurchase a lot of the stuff that I usually buy. Mascaras will repurchase. You know, I'm still going strong with my Suku eyebrow palette. Another 10 years, I'll, I'll be set with that. Those kind of like mundane products are what I'll probably repurchase. One thing I have really gotten into actually are liners. And I've purchased a whole bunch from Eccentric Cosmetics. This one is in a, just a beautiful matte brown. I love the applicator because it's nice and thin. It's like a fine pointed like paintbrush and it's really easy to get like a nice wing. But I bought them in multiple colors and I'm totally down for colorful eyeliner, especially liquid eyeliners. Not a huge fan of the gel eyeliners. Love a good liquid liner because it's just easy. I think that is one easy way for someone who does work in a somewhat professional environment to inject color without looking like, ooh, where are you going? You know, unfortunately it is how it is. People judge you based on how you look, especially in my industry. So I would totally be down for a colorful eyeliner because I think it's an easy way to inject color without looking like it's just too much. If I see good one and done products, like a good eyeshadow color, good textured eyeshadow product, I would totally be down for that. Now, Samantha Ravendahl, who created this brand, Auric, she released some gorgeous cream eyeshadow products. And they looked beautiful, but I feel like the topper is a little bit too glittery for me. And with someone who has, okay, if you can see my eyes, I have very textured eyelids, and I've just realized that very, very, very glittery products don't look good on my eyes. I look better with a metallic satin or a metallic sheen on it rather than really, really lots of fine glitter particles. It just doesn't look good on my eyes. So I have to be very careful with those. If her eyeshadows weren't as glittery, I would have purchased them in a heartbeat. But I love a good one and done. I have a few that I really enjoy in my collection and I have got a video where I've talked about my favorite ones. So I'll link that, but I have since expanded it and I've discovered a few more that I really enjoy. And I would love for companies to bring out one and done eyeshadows that are in gorgeous colors, you know, textures that are flattering on the eye, something like a Kosas 10 second liquid eyeshadow. Love those, but out of the 10 shades that are there, I only like one. I wish they would expand their range. So please do more brands. You're not watching this video. Please do more of those and I will totally buy it this year. So I think that's everything. I mean, I don't want to go on too much because like realistically, like I said, I just don't think I'll be buying that much makeup this year. Let me know what you guys think. You know, uh, what will you be buying this year? What are you totally avoiding this year? Or are you on a no buy, low buy? It just so happened that last year was actually a low buy year for me. So I think it's going to be the same this year. I think it's good. I, I think it's not sustainable to be buying a lot of new makeup every year. I think this is maybe the natural cycle of things where, you know, I, I started really buying a lot of makeup in probably 2015 and it's it's kind of snowballed and now it's, it's slowing down because one can only have such a big collection, especially when it's not one's full-time job. I think it's good that I'm bringing less into my life and that is allowing more love and appreciation for my existing products so I can enjoy it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.